But think of our genome as this music on a disc and aging are scratches on the, di on the disc. And uh, so now the, the reader of the disc cannot play the music beautifully and that's aging. Same with our genes. We don't read our genes well when we get old. But imagine if we could polish that CD and get the scratches off and get back the ability to read the genes the right way. I actually believe this is possible. So how would we do this and what causes it to happen? Well, we did this in a mouse and I'll show you in a second what these mice look like. What we did was we tried to look for what was disrupting the packaging of the DNA. And what we found in yeast cells originally, but now we know in animals, uh, mice particularly, that you can disrupt these structures by breaking the DNA. A piece of broken DNA in the cell is very disruptive and the cell struggles to try and fix it. And in doing so, those nice bundles become unraveled and it's very hard to put them back together again. And over time, over 60, 70, 80 years, you get this complete mess. So we did this to a mouse. We, we broke its chromosomes, we let it heal, and we did this for three weeks when the mice were young. And what I'll show you in the next slide is the mouse that was not treated by cutting. That's the control mouse. And then the sister of that mouse is on the right. That's the mouse that we cut the chromosomes. And 10 months later, you can see that the mouse on the right definitely looks older and we can now measure its biological clock. And is, it is literally 50% older than its sibling. And it doesn't just look older. If we look at its organs, it has dementia, heart disease, diabetes, all of these hallmarks of aging are happening. So what that tells us is that very likely what's happening in this mouse and probably as we age is that broken chromosomes will lead to this loss of information in the cell so that the genes are not read well, similar to the scratches on a, on a CD. But the real question is if you can give something, can you now take it away? And that's what we've been working on for the last, oh, about six years. And what we decided to do was to do an experiment where we, we took very early genes in embryonic development and thought, well, if, if the egg and the embryo can stay young and reprogram to be young again, can we do this in an old animal? So let's go to the next slide. What I wanna tell you about, uh, and we can discuss this later because I'm sure it's a topic of interest, is how do you slow down those broken chromosomes? How do you stop your DNA from unraveling? Well, we think that there's a, a way to do that, and it's called hormesis. Hormesis is essentially what doesn't kill you makes you live longer. And the reason that this works, we think, is that our bodies and all life forms on Earth have evolved to sense adversity. When there's something that's threatening your survival, the body has defensive modes, repairing DNA, making sure that you process energy, fixing wounds, and this keeps you young. But you don't want to actually damage yourself to get these effects, but there are ways to trick the body into thinking that you could die. So let's go to the next slide. There are a number of ways you can do that. One of the ways uh, is shown on the top left here. Uh, this is high intensity inf interval training. It just means, you know, run on a treadmill, lose your breath. You know that you're doing it correctly if you cannot carry out a conversation. Why does high intensity inf interval training work? Well, it's similar to being chased by a saber-toothed tiger or having to run from your enemy. Your body thinks that it's under threat and it will fight back. There are other things you can do to trick the body. You can be hungry during the day, skip breakfast, maybe skip lunch. This is often called intermittent fasting or caloric restriction. Uh, you can expose your body to high temperatures, maybe even low temperatures, sauna and ice baths. Uh, low amino acids, you know, don't eat so much meat every meal. Have, have a plant-based diet for a while. And this word on the right called xenohermetans, uh, I take full responsibility. I helped invent that word. It's, it's actually a mouthful, but what it means is that you can stress your food biologically. You can make it get dehydrated or get eaten by bugs or too much light. And often we see foods that are colored when they're stressed out, like grapes when you pick them at the end of their uh, harvest or uh, lettuce that's been exposed to too much sun. These plants actually make molecules that also can activate our longevity genes. So what are the longevity genes? Well, I talk a lot about them in my book. There are three main categories shown here. One is called mTOR, 
which primarily senses amino acids that you're eating. There's one called AMPK, which senses how much you're eating and how much energy your body's making. Uh, and then there are the sirtuins, which are the ones that I've been working on for my career. And we have seven sirtuins in all of our cells. Now, we know that there are a number of ways to actually chemically activate the sirtuins. Uh, and some of the ones that we've worked on, one's called NAD. Uh, NAD is a chemical that we need for life. Without it, we'd be dead in 30 seconds. Uh, and we have a drug form of that that we're now testing in rare diseases and clinical trials for actually COVID-19 patients. We think that if we can get their age to be younger, those patients will not die. Um, so probably by uh, end of August, September, we'll know if MIB-626 is helpful there. Now, resveratrol is, is an old chestnut, a favorite of many people. It's found in red wine. We discovered, discovered it activates sirtuins back in 2003. Uh, sales of red wine went up 30% and have stayed up. So if you enjoy red wine uh, and tell everybody you do it for health reasons, you're welcome. Uh, but you have to eat a lot of resveratrol to get these effects. And then the, finally, um, there's a new discovery I wanted to tell you about. Another lab, not mine, I discovered that MUFAs, these are monounsaturated poly um, oh, of fatty acids. These MUFAs, oh, you can find them in olive oil and avocados and nuts. Those molecules also activate the sirtuins in a very similar way, if not identical to resveratrol. And what's exciting is that we're now learning that those foods and lifestyles that other people have figured out have been healthy, now we're figuring out how they actually work. It's not that running makes your blood flow better and clean out your arteries. It's that the exercise tricks your body into turning on longevity genes. And then they give you the long-term health, fitness, and longevity benefits. And we know a lot of this because many labs, hundreds of labs around the world, have actually shown this in animals and now in, in people that this is true. And in the case of mice you, or yeast cells, you can get rid of these genes. And now things like low amino acids and caloric restriction, they don't work anymore. And the other thing that you can do is you can feed mice NAD or precursors to NAD, which I'll tell you about, or give them resveratrol or give them oleic acid from olive oil, and we get very similar, if not identical, effects to fasting and exercise. Um, and one of the experiments that we published a couple of years ago was that if we gave uh, a molecule called NMN to mice, they actually could run 150%. And these are old mice. They were actually running faster than the, and longer than the young mice. And we know that this is through the sirtuins, because if we deleted those one of those sirtuin genes, it didn't work anymore.